Battlefield 5, 2022. God, I don't think any of us thought we'd still be playing this god-awful game. Not after what was to be the love letter to the fans, Battlefield 2042 was to come out. But, as we know, that turned to a pile of steaming dog shit. So, here we are, still playing Battlefield 5, still dying the same frustrating deaths. But hey, it's Battlefield, so let's kick back and enjoy. I'm Leet Rage, your host. So let's have a look at what Battlefield 5 is in 2022. So this video is just going to be a pretty much a bunch of clips, as usual, making me look a lot better than I actually am, to just try and illustrate what Battlefield 5 law is like in this very late period of its death. In fact, this game should be so dead, this should not be a single server, but once again thanks to certain incompetent elements in DICE pushing their own agendas over players' wishes, here we are again. So the first thing you'll notice when jumping back on 2042 is a staggering amount of new players. Now you might be thinking, oh yes I'm going to drop 100 bomb after 100 bomb, but oh you couldn't be so wrong. You see thanks to DICE's infinite wisdom these new players have been gifted super zoom snap aim assist, which makes winning one on one gunfights against them, well surprisingly difficult. Well that is, at least if you're a bot like me. And yes, I am well aware of the argument, if they didn't have it, they wouldn't play, the servers would be dead. Fair enough, but it's still bloody frustrating. In fact, you've got to hand it to these new players, you see, they have found something that we, the original player base, never really quite sussed out. Well, mainly because we had pride, but pretty much, when you combine new level aim assist, with camping, with a ghillie suit, with an overpowered weapon, you become an absolute unstop, no, not unstoppable, unseeable demon. And while everyone, yes, has their own playstyles, you can hardly call this honourable. It's enough to bring back traumatic memories from campers in fields in Warzone. Probably why I was trying to jump shot there. A bad time? Yeah, thanks to you, mate. And considering most of Deathwish don't play anymore, usually just left there bleeding out, frantically pinging the enemy as your squad mates either do A, do nothing, or B, pay no attention to your pings and run straight to you to try and get to revive and become Mr. Bad Times' next victim. Moving on to the vehicle players front, I see a lot of up and coming tankers and pilots in the lobbies these days that I haven't seen before. Well, to be honest, mainly pilots who I spend a lot of time trying to flag her out of the sky because they're pilots. But the usual bell curve distribution of tankers, where almost half seem to sit way too far back camping spawn, and the other half seem to be just way too aggressive and push into caps only to die instantly, seems to be breaking a bit. A lot more tankers are just sitting, or not too close, but just at right distance, overwatching infantry pushing on cap, which is good to see. That being said though, there are some rather distinctly weird uh, tank plays out there, like what the hell is this bloke doing? I had to say something negative apart from pilots who everyone just hates because they're pilots about the vehicle players currently it's for a lot more people seem to be using the armoured cars I'm not calling them tanks they are an abomination like look at this armoured car driver doing armoured car things sitting 30 freaking kilometres so far back he's almost in the previous map like it just boggles your mind Players who spawn in armoured cars are soon going so far down my list of personal approval that they're going to dip below pilots any minute now. Because all they seem to do is farm infantry endlessly, you fire a shot at them and they panic and run, run away in a massive cloud of smoke and it, the smoke is so vast that you can't even track their movements halfway through it. And because the armoured cars have so much health compared to tanks, it's like, why waste AP ammo on them? All they do is sit and farm and be annoying. My advice to armoured car drivers is, grow a pair of balls and fight like a real tanker. Don't be a cowardly little infantry farmer. Come and fight me like a man, or a woman. And stop wasting my AP ammo, just get lost! Okay, deep breaths, deep breaths, I'm getting carried away here. But it's Battlefield, so please forgive me. If you know how to play vehicles, and you're really having a rough time, you should try tanking or plying on American servers. Especially tanking, because unlike Australians, Americans understand this concept called teamwork, 
And you'd be surprised to see that if you're actually playing the objective, people will repair you. It's really like a dream come true because the infantry realise, hey, this guy's actually trying to help us win the match. Maybe we should actually help him. And it's actually quite rare for um, players to resort to grubby tactics such as mosquitoes and whatnot to get rid of a tank. They'll actually fight decently with honour. And yes, you're probably wondering, I did spend the entire game on Delta Objective. But in reality, due to the map design, there is no better place. I can look after Charlie, I can look after Delta and destroy any incoming tanks. In addition to that, Delta is a tank spawn, so you get one tank, and it's also a great spawn point for infantry. If you hold a tank on this position for the entire game, you can almost be guaranteed a victory. Just be warned though, Americans, like any other member of the human race, seem to have a very negative reaction after the fifth time that they die to one of your tank shells, and they tend to really get annoyed after a certain point. And at that stage, you can expect some very weird attack plans. Americans, they don't care about their score per minute, they don't care about their kill-death ratio. At this stage, all they care about is removing you from the equation, and they will do some very interesting things. They obviously noticed that I was going back to the resupply using the same road, so they set a little ambush for me. And just to top it off, they made sure I was dead by sending two tanks as well as a full squad of infantry that just seemed to appear out of the ether making this engagement very reminiscent of Black Ops Zombies. So the question remains, why would you play Battlefield 5 in 2022? Despite all its flaws, this game is, in my opinion, the last battlefield. The last battlefield with platoons, the last battlefield with a class system, the last battlefield as we know and love it. It might not be a very good battlefield, but it is Battlefield, unlike 2042. And I feel that's reflected by the player count, as I don't think there's been a single time that I've had more Battlefield friends play 2042 than Battlefield 5. In the midst of the constant, annoying, frustrating deaths, there remains still the chaos, the, the fun, the teamwork. It's all there, it's all there struggling to break through. And every now and again, you'll find elements of it, and it'll bring back such great memories from Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4, all those fantastic times we've had, and it makes you wonder what this game could have really been. And the sad thing is, Battlefield didn't have to change in order to satisfy the monetary desires of some. You see, Battlefield tends to look at COD and look at its success, and measures itself against it, but it's looking at it wrong. Every year, Call of Duty releases another title that sells very well, very little changes, and that is the key to their success, because the COD brand remains the Call of Duty brand, that fun, fast, quick arcade shooter. Battlefield didn't need to reinvent the wheel, they didn't need to bring in specialists and all that nonsense, all they had to do was create a polished, fun game, and the fan base would continue to grow. But instead, what I call the LSD element inside DOS won the day with 2042. All we wanted, all the fans wanted, was a reskin Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 3. But in an attempt to reinvent the wheel and attract a younger audience, they pretty much destroyed the entire franchise. So what have Battlefield fans got left? Battlefield 1's pretty underpopulated, especially in Oceania, leaving only Battlefield 5. And that's why I'm playing. Because this is all Battlefield fans have left. A sad tale of a franchise on its deathbed. Anyway, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. If I ever get around to releasing one that is. Nah, I will. I'll catch us all. Take care, and I'll see you all when Modern Warfare comes out.